So hi again, everyone. Uh, this is the, the last afternoon of our Geothermal Winter School. So last conference cycle, but not least, is called uh, Promoting Enhanced Geothermal Systems Across Europe. Therefore, we will now focus on, on different aspects that can help uh, fostering deep geothermal energy from potentiality to reality on, on European land. Uh, this involves uh, bridging technical, social, and economical aspects, uh, but also mapping the untapped resources. By this means, uh, we could provide valuable uh, expert approaches, but also inter interdisciplinary approaches to the public authorities in order to address the visibility of geothermal energy among the society and its uh, reliability among the renewable energies. So during this session, we will have two keynote uh, lectures and one other lecture. The first keynote lecture of the cycle will be given by Adele Manzela and will deal with the transparency and openness of project developments uh, from the technical experts by considering the involvement of citizens as a strong leverage to improve the social acceptance. The second keynote lecture will be given by uh, Professor David Brun and will highlight the main technical uh, messages of EGS uh, developments from early days to present in order to summarize the key components uh, distinguishing successful EGS projects from conventional uh, hydrothermal developments with naturally high productivity. And the third lecture of the afternoon by Bianca Wagner will concentrate on mapping the potential of EGS throughout Europe by performing a comprehensive approach that comprises a, a broad subsurface and surface data sets. This lecture will address a kind of methodological guide in which the identified geological potential has to be matched uh, with the current and future users' demands uh, for heat and or power and also uh, about their location. So we start now with the first uh, keynote lecture of the afternoon. We are very pleased to uh, welcome uh, Adele Manzela. Uh, hello, Adele. Hello. Thank you for, <clears throat> for the invitation. Thank you. You're Good welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, we, are, we are very honored to, to uh, have you uh, during this um, Geothermal Winter School. Uh, so Adele is a senior scientist at the Institute of Geosciences and Earth Resources of the National Research Council of Italy. And she works as a geophysicist in geothermal exploration to conduct field and theoretical uh, investigation on geothermal systems in Italy and abroad. She works in seismology, numerical modeling for seismic and electromagnetism and conducted uh, magnetotheric surveys for uh, crustal investigation, groundwater exploration, and mainly for geothermal exploration. Uh, she coordinated uh, for the CNR, uh, the Italian Geothermal Evaluation Project, uh, and for the Geothermal Atlas of Southern Italy. And since uh, 2005, she led the participation of the CNR uh, and was VP leader, uh, work package leader in, in, very, in many different uh, European projects dedicated to geothermal energy. Um, and in the recent years, she uh, expanded her interest in also uh, to the social aspects of geothermal energy. And she's is, uh, in this uh, scope that uh, she, she uh, will give this uh, lecture. And she edited um, for Springer edition, the first book entirely dedicated to this topic, a very remarkable book. Uh, on 2018, she won the Partitius Medal for providing geothermal knowledge for accelerating the deployment of geothermal energy uh, from this contribution. Uh, she, she's president of the Italian Geothermal Association and participates to the steering committee of the European Technology and Innovation Platform of Deep Geothermal Energy. And she's a board uh, in the board of the International Geothermal Association. What a CV. <laughs> Thank you, Adele, for being with us. Uh, the floor is yours for uh, your uh, lecture. That is Thank called you. Social Aspects <laughs> for Geothermal, 
developments and policy implications. Thanks a lot, Xavier. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, you have heard that I am not a psychologist or so sociologist, so I will give you a, a, a view of social aspects from the perspective of a uh, technician more. Um, so uh, I'm not talking, I will not present you any specific result because there are many in the literature and uh, examples, but uh, I will give you more an overview of how I approach this, uh, this matter. And uh, um, working in particular with more expert colleagues uh, in uh, social uh, activities, uh, and in particular for a number of uh, projects uh, or occasion and opportunity. Uh, so for the GEMEX project, I work with a number of uh, colleagues. I, I collaborated with uh, Anna Pellizzone and Agnes Allandotti first uh, to, to do some studies in Italy, for Italy, and then collecting these uh, uh, case studies in the book that uh, was mentioned. Um, I will tackle uh, policy um, aspects uh, thanks to a recent uh, project, which is JOMB, but we will go there uh, in a not so linear uh, way. So I will try to frame for you the social aspects uh, talking about uh, the change of perspective, the, the, the governance, the change of, uh, of the way to use the regulation more in a governance view, uh, the importance of consumer for the, for the companies and uh, from, from many point of view, um, how to measure social impacts and uh, what is the, uh, the actual status of the indicators for these, how I fell, I feel some that some, sometimes lost in this uh, transition, um, and uh, the collection of studies, and uh, and finally, in eventually, the policy and regulation. First of all, let's clarify that we are not alone. Um, the problem of social resistance that we perceive in our development of geothermal energy. Um, is uh, uh, common to many other sectors, uh, um, including all geothermal, uh, renewable geothermal development. Um, and uh, I put here a phrase from the International Renewable Energy Agency. So we strive to uh, put the, the, the Paris Climate Agreement into practice, but uh, this is not uh, for, um, feel felt by everybody as uh, a good thing um, in maybe in principle but not in the actual realization and so we need to balance uh, to to uh, to complete this energy transition but also take into consideration the people welfare and uh, which is also um, what they think about uh, development uh, in, uh, in their territories. So we have passed from uh, the, the, the um, previous uh, triangle of energy generation. So of course I will uh, speak as simplifying uh, and uh, um, trying to, um, to, to synthesize the concepts. So we pass from a moment where essentially supply security, profitability and environmental compatibility were um, the elements for choosing to proceed or not in a certain project to the so-called square of energy generation where the three components uh, were accompanied by social acceptance. And this is becoming more and more important. Uh, consider that uh, while the three previous uh, topics uh, were essentially in the hands of the operators, of the developers, uh, social acceptance uh, is uh, something which is much more complex to, um, to control in some way. There, uh, has, there is a, a, we have to take into account that there is a difference in uh, perspective. On one side, we have policymakers and energy companies uh, uh, looking for economic benefits, uh, where economic is not uh, re only revenues, but also uh, many other things, uh, especially those uh, which are socially responsible, for, exam for example, to, to fight uh, global scale issues. Uh, on the other side, we have territories and citizens uh, which are looking mainly to direct uh, economic benefits and uh, uh, do not want to uh, risk anything. So they have a 
possibly perceived, but uh, the, 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 the perception that there, are, uh, there is a probability of negative impacts at the local scale. So uh, we are talking about a different uh, scale of perception and uh, this decision for using the energy resources are so uh, multi-level, individual, community, national, and international. Uh, social factors uh, are related to a number of, uh, of uh, topics, so ethics, morality, social norms, uh, also political factors. So the, the matter is very com complex. What makes also the matter particularly complex is the fact that these uh, social technical systems uh, are frame in a social context, but they also contribute to shape this social context. So there is a continuous feedback of an evolution of the situation. Um, we passed from a time where essentially the, the decision for energy development were taken in a sort of top-down political regulation. Uh, we passed from that to a um, to the to the introduction of a concept of governance. So um, the governance uh, is accompanied by the, the market regulation and community regulation. So we are uh, in, a, in a realm which is very hard to follow in all its track. What I am particularly focusing in this presentation are uh, is the, the production of energy mainly for deep geothermal, what we call deep geothermal, so mainly power production, large district heating systems, so a commodity-based sector. Although we have to consider, but I'm not talking about that, that the picture is even more complex uh, with some technologies. We are not talking anymore only of consumer, but also of prosumers, those who produce and use the energy. And also energy communities come into play in this, from this point of view. But uh, that is uh, another part which I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, tackling here. When we go at the level of the companies, let's do a general uh, um, overview. Um, the companies have um, developed uh, uh, more and more the, the need and the, in the, the, the will to um, have relationship with all the stakeholders. So customers, employees, community, shareholders, governments, uh, and this uh, um, set of, uh, of relationship is what is called, uh, is uh, generally, um, framed in the in the acronym CSR, so corporate social responsibility. Uh, in this, uh, from this point of view, uh, consumers are clearly cl the key, key stakeholders for the for the companies, um, and we we are aware that uh, the consumers of energy are becoming uh, and not only of energy are becoming more and more aware of the. Uh, social um, impact of the uh, of the market and uh, and on the natural environment. So it is becoming uh, more and more important for the companies to produce not only a uh, clarify the quality of the product, but also to have a good reputation. Um, in uh, on the number of uh, um, studies that have been done on, C on uh, CSR, it, uh, although they are not enough, uh, because uh, this is uh, a, a topic which is in continuous uh, evolution, um, they in, for, uh, at least for the, for the energy, many, um, in many cases, uh, there has been a tendency to adopt a sort of passive, uh, passive CSR. Uh, so sim simply complying to social and environmental mandatory standards. So it was uh, particularly important to set a policy that uh, set uh, some mandatory standards uh, for, the, um, for the development. And, but uh, one wonder if that is uh, enough. We will uh, arrive to this, uh, to this fact. Uh, but uh, it is clearly uh, of interest for the companies uh, uh, with time, it is becoming more and more clear that uh, 
uh, it is important for the company and also for the governments at, at the end uh, to, um, to provide a, um, a quality standard and some recognizability for the consumers. Um, in many cases, uh, it was uh, studied that uh, the consumers uh, do not uh, trust uh, so much the companies what, when the companies say, uh, I, am, uh, um, I am investing just for the good of the society. Uh, it is clear uh, to the consumers that uh, um, this, is, this cannot be the only reason for, for, uh, for the business. Um, and uh, this uh, um, kind of uh, communication may have uh, a different, uh, um, a different uh, uh, message, can be received differently from, from the original uh, uh, reason for sending it. So it's much better uh, to improve the communication and to explain honestly and, uh, and better what are all the interests for the companies uh, in developing certain, uh, certain energy or products. Um, but it is clear that at the moment, this uh, topic is not com completely understood uh, and uh, more research and data are required to understand uh, the link between uh, CSR and the loyalty and trust of consumers. But it is clear that uh, for the companies uh, and for developing energy in general, there are advantages of uh, measuring social output and impacts because this uh, uh, is uh, an added value to the, to the products, uh, improve the credibility. Um, it would be good to have a measure of this uh, because if we pro can provide measurable results also from this point of view, it would be an added value, of course, and would also avoid uh, to uh, face unplanned um, issues, which of course uh, also uh, has a cost and also has a, a large importance for maintaining the license uh, to operate. So it is important, clearly more important for, uh, the, for the sector to understand and quantify not only the energy interest of stakeholders, but also the non-energy interest of the stakeholder. Mm, there has been many um, classification and ranking of uh, social impacts uh, or output or effect. First of all, just to clarify the terms, uh, uh, as uh, Clark did in 2004, by output, uh, we mean uh, essentially direct and tangible results of the activity. The outcomes are the changes to the social system and the impact should be the outcomes minus what would have happened uh, in, in, any, in any case. And uh, so we are um, in a number of terms uh, to be used, uh, and sometimes it, somebody sometimes we do not use the right terms. Uh, um, so we have to learn how to use all these terms. But uh, all of them uh, go in the direction of defining the social value creation. And uh, we need to understand this social change process. I'm not going in the details of the many ranking and classification, but I give you just uh, uh, some uh, um, example of how many of them are uh, and how different they are. For example, in 2007, we had uh, from these authors uh, a, a ranking of the four categories to have the potential to cause social resistance, environmental issues, missing involvement issues, financial issues, and NIMBY, the famous NIMBY that we, we often speak of. And in the same year, now the, another author classified uh, them in a more detailed way. So uh, with three categories, personal factors, social cultural factors, and contextual factors, NIMBYs remain uh, much more uh, on the side of uh, these. Um, there are also uh, various ranking of the social impacts that 
uh, of the of the renewable projects uh, development projects so for example in this uh, in this example they are ranked as public perception employment health and safety and uh, local infrastructure but this is not the only way to classify them we heard for a long while um, this is an example but there are many of this kind that the the main ways to reduce social resistance are essentially uh, ranked as communication and information integration and involvement of citizen balance of interest and conflict resolution all of these are left on the shoulders of the developers, but is it true that everything should be left essentially on the shoulders of the developers? This is something that uh, I would like to discuss with you after I finish, but uh, let me first go on. An example of uh, how we should communicate with the developers, I mean, the, the communicate uh, uh, during the different phase of, uh, of a of a project. Uh, so there are many hints of this kind. This is just an example. But we essentially passed from a sort of what is called here deficit model. model. So public communication, because uh, uh, we thought that uh, the opposition was raised by the lack of knowledge. So uh, it was a, a defensive uh, position that we, we, we figured out. And the solution that was uh, um, provided was essentially a one-way communication, top-down, from the expert to the not expert. This has been done now for a while, but it clearly is not enough. So we then uh, passed to, um, to the public consultation uh, to understand the views of the public and uh, the most uh, known uh, or most common or the most uh, uh, considered um, uh, way to, to face these uh, issues is by public engagement, which we have uh, where we have a two way exchange, so a complete dialogue and, and in which the citizen play an active role uh, for the science and innovation uh, planning. So everything is co-produced. So we work for the society, not only we work for the society, but we work with the society. And this uh, has been a change of paradigm in a way. Um, we must be aware, for example, that public participation is not something that we can invent on, this, on the spot. Is uh, For us, for example, from a technical point of view, is let's say it's uh, easy, we, we learned uh, in a beautiful, uh, in the beautiful um, um, uh, event that was, uh, that I followed on, uh, on Wednesday, uh, how to communicate, we can improve in our communication, but still in that case is one way communication. Uh, in public participation, uh, we uh, must be even more careful because uh, uh, you can obtain uh, a completely opposite result uh, if we are not able to, um, to follow the public participation. So we need a professional to do this. Uh, so facilitators, professional super parties facilitators to, to, in, to um, define and organize the dialogue. And, even more for public engagement. But at the end, uh, what should I do if I am in the, in the, uh, in the suits of a, of a company who is willing to develop, uh, has everything for going on, but uh, uh, wants to face the social uh, aspects in the most effective way? Do, do, do we have a um, a protocol uh, to do that, and is there a clear path for defining uh, this uh, the social impact of a certain project? Also, because this is important for comparing different uh, uh, plans for the same area, for example. Actually, from what I understand, there isn't a common framework for measuring the social impact. There are a number of of documents that I list here, for example, this white paper, a guide to measuring uh, social impacts, 
where some hints on how to proceed is uh, provided. There is a um, social impact measurement uh, provided by this uh, subgroup. So they, 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 there is a, a, a way to measure these. There is even a measuring socioeconomic impact, a guide for business. And again, some proposal, but at the end, we do not have a methodology for measuring these and also comparing among different sectors. Um, because it's very hard to precise, to create a clear, precise, transparent indicators on these, uh, on these aspects. Uh, historically, essentially also to transform these uh, um, indicators and, uh, and um, in some way regulate them, two main trends have been followed. One was uh, in uh, account for the social accounting and audit. Um, and the other one, which took more uh, credit in a number of countries, is the social impact, so-called social impact assessment, to monitor and analyze unintended consequences. I read uh, a very recent paper on these, on the application of these in Mexico, and uh, I was uh, I was very surprised to, to read that uh, yes, it improved the things um, in uh, so uh, fixed problems uh, in uh, its application fixed problem in Mexico. But uh, uh, there are still so many limitations. And one of them is that uh, it has a restricted social involvement. So we are still far, even with social impact assessment from, we are far from um, public engagement. Uh, so I say, well, what should we do? We, we want to do it. We want to work for the society. So. Uh, too many, so many studies, so many examples, so many hints, but then uh, I, am, I tend to be sort of pragmatic. I would like to, to, to have a sort of instruction. Um, what, what can I do? Not, not uh, exactly to reach the uh, social uh, acceptance, but at least to uh, check beforehand, before, before going on, uh, if there is a, a way, a path, and how I can improve this, uh, um, this development. So I was wondering, do we need uh, more studies? Do we need to expand competencies? So we need more training. Uh, what kind of policy tools do we need to develop? Mm, for sure, things have improved in the last years in Europe. Uh, because uh, um, the, the concept of responsible research and innovation have been attached to so many calls of uh, Horizon 2020 and will probably, will surely be uh, connected uh, in uh, Horizon Europe. So there has been much more opportunities for more studies. So things are improving. But uh, um, I wanted, we wanted to check what is the situation in the different countries, not only in, uh, in Europe. This is why having the opportunity, of course, uh, we edited uh, a book asking to authors essentially to describe for us uh, how geothermal development uh, um, went on in their country, what is, for example, the ownership and the management of geothermal resource, what is, what was, what is the, the perception for different technologies, um, and what kind of uh, social engagement uh, um, methods have been used uh, at the level of the different countries. And we collected this information for 11 countries around the world. First of all, when we, um, when we were writing the introduction, we had the idea to check on literature. Our perception was that uh, in the geothermal uh, sector, there, there are too few uh, studies uh, from a social point of view. But when we check in literature and compare with other sector, yes, it is clear that there are still very few studies with respect to other kind of papers uh, for uh, scientific articles for, uh, the geothermal sector, but uh, um, much more in a weighted count, uh, much more than in other sector. Only CCS and geoengineering have, uh, um, in particular geoengineering, if you see the numbers on this table, um, have uh, a much larger 
uh, number, weighted number of papers on, uh, um, on social aspects. So we, we were looking in the keywords uh, uh, as geothermal, public engagement, social aspects, public perception, or social acceptance. Um, we discovered, looking at these cases, uh, that uh, um, there are so many methodologies uh, and they also are used in, in, dif in different ways uh, in the various countries. You see uh, interviews, uh, social media analysis, focus group, uh, workshop, which is good. On the other side, it's very hard to compare one side to another. And I do not say even country because, of course, all these uh, now it is grouped by, by, by country, but it, clearly it is not uh, the country, uh, is the site which is unique and uh, has uh, specific studies. So is it possible to compare all these? Do we have at the end a perception of uh, where the technologies are more accepted? Uh, um, how to do this uh, comparison? Uh, the perplexities that were uh, collected in these uh, various uh, cases are related to geothermal technologies, but sometimes also to geothermal governance in the different countries. Many uh, countries define, uh, so uh, underline the lack of information. So this is clearly something that we need to improve, even if we are communicating much more than in the past, but we can improve. Um, uh, the, the environmental concerns are always present in all these studies. In some cases, unfortunate experience, not only in the same country, but also in the other country, because now we are global. So we know immediately about a good example that we can, we can point to and say, ah, no, this is terrible. So, um, but uh, also interesting was the, per the different perception for the different technology and application. Um, so we concluded uh, that uh, from in that uh, in that book uh, that uh, we can improve uh, the information because uh, it is not complete, but it is also sparse. Um, it is clear that the geothermal is less known than many other energy sources, and uh, there is uh, this risk uh, which is attached, the idea of risk, uncertainty, which is attached to the geothermal real. Uh, we also found that uh, uh, people, this is something that also we perceived in Italy, they, they have more trust uh, on, uh, they, they trust more scientists and researchers than uh, uh, companies or government uh, because they consider them uh, more super parties. This is not always true, but it is something that we have to take into account. Uh, clearly, we need a curricula, we need training, we need to improve, uh, to increase the number of uh, professionals in this, uh, in this uh, expertise, but also we need to bridge expertise. We, we, we should arrive to a place where technical and social aspects are both known uh, to, prof to professionals in this, uh, in this sector. Um, so we, we gave uh, a number of, uh, of uh, indications. So we, we, we think that uh, um, we need to consolidate the forms of dialogue. Uh, we need more data because uh, actually there are too few data. Uh, and, but we also need to coordinate this data in order to be able to have a uniform uh, picture uh, uniform in the methodologies, not in the result, of course, but at least the methodologies, in some way we have to harmonize the methodologies. So we need common places, we need opportunities for doing that, at least, for example, for, uh, at a European level. Um, we need to bridge the competencies and roles. Uh, I always say that geothermal is particularly complex because we have to talk uh, all together, engineers, economists, uh, Air scientists, which is not easy because we, we actually speak different languages. So in the geothermal sector, we have to arrive at least to a certain level of common language. And now we have also the social um, professions. And, uh, and we have to learn a little of everything to understand how to proceed all together and uh, arrive to a place where not only social acceptance 
our goal is not only the social acceptance, but uh, as I say here, as I write here, is a uh, sort of co-creating the future together with citizen society as a whole. This is the final, uh, the final goal at the end. Um, regarding the policy, I, uh, as I said, I do not think that this is only on the shoulders of developers. It's something that relates all of us. Uh, industry, um, scientists, uh, uh, governments, uh, um, citizens represented in various ways, uh, we have to share uh, these uh, in the planning. And um, so what could we do uh, from a policy point of view? One opportunity to uh, start to think about this uh, was uh, um, I, I was involved in uh, this GeoMV project, uh, a project running right now. It will end on uh, next April. It's mainly related to uh, environmental aspects, but we also tackled some of the uh, three main topics that are related to the social uh, aspects. First of all, public participation. Um, from the regulation point of view, a part of the project is related to um, provide recommendation for um, harmonization and the sharing of best practice, practices uh, in the European countries. And uh, uh, from a, a regulation point of view, it's uh, a legal obligation to involve the public. So the public is given the opportunity to be informed and express its opinion. How is it done in practice in our small, because it's, it, this is really a little part of the project. Uh, in, the, in the analysis that we did, uh, it is clear that the participation is often very low and uh, it's very difficult to take into account the opinion. So um, at the end, these public inquiries required by law can reflect uh, a feeble consent uh, or the opposite be a platform of protest. Um, it is clear that depends place by place, but uh, um, can we improve this? So in this project, uh, we developed uh, essentially four main uh, recommendations to deepen the process. This part was, by the way, um, I hope, I don't know if Fanny is, uh, is uh, here, but uh, this is uh, coordinated by BRGM, by colleagues from BRGM. Uh, the, 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 the recommendation uh, is to deepen the process, so improve the dialogue, fostering the public participation, improving communication, also seeking protocols. Uh, we are very curious, I am very curious to see uh, this geothermal sustainability assessment protocol, which uh, IGA is going to deliver to, to publish uh, very, very soon, uh, to take into account uh, altogether environmental, social, technical, and financial issues. This could be a very interesting protocol to, to, to look at and to, um, to see. Um, also to compare this sector with other sector. And uh, uh, this uh, protocol is analog to uh, a, a one, one that was developed for hydro, uh, for, for hydro uh, but maybe can be expanded to other energy sectors. So it would, could be an interesting way to proceed. Uh, it is important anyway to accept that the project may be questioned and taking the opinions into account. This is very important from uh, uh, public participation. Expand the perimeter both from the geographical point of view and the governance point, point of view to be sure to involve all the important stakeholders. Adapt the timing. The communication must be as early as possible on the project and there is also a need of ongoing process adapt the process to the territory because uh, it's not uh, uh, clearly we are not going to to define a fixed way to um, to proceed um, but uh, how to adapt this to the territory is uh, not easy to to understand beforehand another uh, topic that is related to this uh, uh, issues, social issues, uh, is uh, improving data sharing because this connects to the communication. Um, from our point of view, it is very important to define uh, a European standard on information sharing. 
with a minimum amount of data, but also encouraging to go further. Transparency in uh, all these issues is uh, very important. Also the transparency of uh, data and information. Of course, not all the data should be provided to everybody. There is clearly a part which will re remain and must remain confidential, but we have to define what is uh, good to be published and in what way. Uh, using the fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable principle for data management, but also um, defining the, the, the data for um, the different targets, for the different target group. And so adapt the communication to the target, a sort of mediation, a terminology which is, must be adapted to the target group. Uh, also dissemination support, which should be ad uh, adapted and chosen according to the target group. Improve data accessibility, but also awareness of accessible information, because uh, in many cases, these data, you, you discover that they are public, but nobody knows, and this is not enough. And share reliable information and data. And finally, and, and, and I finished, um, Recommendation for improving, highlighting, and communicating local benefits. Because uh, benefits, well, uh, impacts are also benefits. And, uh, and sometimes we simply don't know or we are not aware. Uh, we, we, we look for bad examples, but uh, we don't know and we don't, do not pretend the society um, citizens um, take bad examples as, an, as a reason for stopping development. And they do not look for benefits in other countries and they do not ask, do not ask we want this. We want geothermal development, our, this is our dream. We want geothermal development because we want uh, these benefits. What are these benefits? So we propose to establish a fund, possibly derived by royalties, or local taxes on you, you know, and support the local communities and regions, but it also to declare that they come from the development. Support this, the local utilization of geothermal heat. Uh, this applies in particular for power production, of course. So to have a circular, so to embed more geothermal development in the circular economy, we know that we are going in this direction, but this should be strengthened more with the help of the governments, with the support of the governments and of the local authorities. And, and establish a plan for valorizing the local benefits because uh, how many jobs derive from uh, this development? Uh, not so many countries know it. What are the other benefits? The greenhouse gas emission um, uh, reduction or um, the, 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 the lack, uh, so we are not buying uh, this amount of, uh, of um, fossil fuels, uh, so we are saving from these fossil fuels. So there are many things that should be highlighted and also communicated um, to the citizen and not only to the local territories, but also to the governments. This should become uh, a way also uh, a, a, an instrument for energy planning. Uh, and this can also improve uh, local condition and training, for example, of local people in the, uh, in the technology uh, related directly or indirectly to the geothermal development. So directly for geothermal production or indirectly, for example, in tourism. But this can be also paid by royalties, for example, to, by, to, by the, the fund, the geothermal fund that I mentioned before. So these are the hints, and uh, I really would like to, to hear from you what you think and uh, um, to see how we can improve from this uh, point of view. There, are, there is a long road ahead, but I think we are on the, on the right road and uh, we, can, uh, we, we can proceed if we go all together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adele. Thank you for this great, great talk. Um, I think I think uh, you guys in the, in the audience should have uh, 
many questions to ask to Adelaide, I guess. Yeah, there is there is one rising from uh, Elsa Cristina Ramayo. Um, she's asking Adeline, nice lecture, thanks. The development of citizens observatory in Portugal, Spain, France, and Ireland has known strong announcements recently and is being successfully implemented, although not related with geothermal, but with coastal hazard. Have you considered them in your study? That's a very flexible approach. It could be also successfully used in geothermal. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the, 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 the answer is simply no. But uh, the question is a very good one because uh, also sharing experience among sectors. Uh, it is improving, but, of but still not uh, done enough. Um, there are opportunities for this. Uh, in, uh, for example, I know that there is a ERA uh, joint program on social aspects, uh, so bridging different, uh, but I don't know actually the, the results, uh, the, the real results from all the studies. Uh, uh, so um, I, I agree that uh, we should share more and look also to other examples, uh, good examples, but also bad examples, but just to learn uh, how to proceed in the best way. Very good. Thanks. Um... I think there is another, another question. Uh, from Kasia, uh, maybe she's a student, uh, I don't know. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I researched the, I researched the indirect effects of the, the geothermal direct application. My main concern is the data about the indirect application. What are your experiences? Direct application, I think is, I know, indirect application. Um, I don't know if indirect um, application you mean, for example, uh, the, the, the um, uh, cascade uses, in, indirect application is a general term. We can consider it, uh, for example, cascade uses or uh, application like tourism. The, this is a, a, a indirect effect of geothermal development in many, in many countries. I discovered that, for example, in uh, New Zealand or even in, uh, in the Philippines, uh, all these data are collected by law. And uh, so they can immediately say, OK, the geothermal development uh, uh, provide this number of direct and indirect jobs. Uh, these revenues, uh, not only for the geothermal direct uh, um, development, but also the revenues for tourism, for, uh, for uh, fish farming, for um, uh, this, all these kind of things, but this is done in very, very few countries. This is why we also inserted local benefit in GOMV uh, to, to recommend, uh, to, to enforce by law the, 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 the requirement to have all this information uh, collected. Because if we do not put in the law, we are not going. Uh, the companies can provide their data, but cannot uh, take the um, the, 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 the job of uh, uh, looking at all of this data, or at least they need to coordinate in some way with the local authorities uh, uh, for this. So this is, again, uh, what I say, it's not only on the shoulder of the companies. I think that the companies, of course, they have a large part of the responsibility, but uh, they are not, uh, they shouldn't be left alone uh, and uh, under <laughs> the, the, the gun in some way. We have all to support uh, these, uh, um, these, the development of this because it's on very different levels and we can all contribute. Yes, I agree, I agree very much. Um, and Kasia is also asking, do you think the policies of reporting will improve the standard reporting in this case? Um, yes, I think so. Mm, how, how long it will take, I don't know. <laughs> I cannot foresee. But uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, policies are uh, improving from this point of view. Um, I, for example, I was uh, thinking about asking uh, a, a survey by Euro uh, barometer that would be very helpful 
in, uh, from this point of view. But uh, we have to figure out how to proceed on these, uh, on these aspects. Nice. I may have a, a short question. Uh, can you please uh, develop a little bit about the, the method that uh, people should employ to, in terms of uh, conflict resolution? Because uh, for the most, uh, the, 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 the most uh, convinced people, that, that uh, the less convinced people, uh, how, and the people that actually are the most anger, what, uh, what can we, we do with, uh, with these groups? I, I would like to, to have an answer, but uh, I have the same struggle in Italy. Uh, so I do not have a solution. Um, what, uh, what is, uh, there are people that cannot be convinced. Uh, I, I arrived to this uh, conclusion, but this doesn't mean that every, everything should be stopped. I, my experience in Italy is that uh, People who are against are very vocal and are very organized, but many people who are positive or neutral, they simply do not say because they are not asked uh, to provide uh, a, an idea or this doesn't mean that we should uh, have uh, a referendum every time. This is not feasible and probably not really useful. Mm, but uh, um, a better, uh, engagement with local territories uh, and a way to measure these uh, social uh, um, the, the social in, impact uh, in the in the um, for the projects that are already running. I think it will help because up to now we have only indicators for bad things. <laughs> but not so many for good, uh, for good uh, results. Uh, apart, of course, the energy produced, uh, uh, but that, uh, you see, is not enough. It's simply not enough, not anymore. So we have to find a way to measure also the other benefits, the other advantages uh, and, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the projects, the many projects that are running uh, smoothly, simply, and have run for a long time without any problem. We are trying to do this from an environmental point of view, but uh, the same applies to the social part. Okay, um, thank you very much. I see another question. Yes, there is another question from uh, Beatrice. The desert. How can we help people accept geothermal projects after induced seismic events, for example? Uh, I think that the the, the 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 talk on Wednesday was very clear from this point of view. But uh, I, I give you my opinion. Um, it is true that we have example of uh, induced seismicity in some cases, but we have much much more example of uh, indicates of, uh, of um, development of no seismic events. Uh, if we take only the bad examples um, as a possible risk, uh, uh, we, we are stuck in so many things, not only in geothermal. So I continue to believe that we can safely develop geothermal in uh, most cases, and uh, we have to, uh, those who are responsible for problems, uh, they are responsible, that, that's it. So I do not have uh, a pragmatic solution for this, uh, apart informing. I think that we need to do a lot of information, much more information on this issue, and seismic, as well as other environmental topics, should be addressed more clearly and more specifically to clarify where they happen and that there is not a unique uh, a linear correspondence geothermal development means uh, seismicity because it's not, simply not. And we have to clarify why not uh, and, uh, and what happens. Then I don't know uh, uh, exactly, uh, but this is something that many people, I'm sure that many people, most people, are aware of this, but they are not again very vocal from this point of view. Yeah. 
maybe it would be it would be nice to uh, to uh, gather all the information about the operation that uh, I mean uh, let's say the stimulation operation that that we're running the mm -hmm. period of time and the only period where the there have been some events and just yes. very lonely locations. Yes, this is something that we propose in GeoMB to have a, mm -hmm. a, a list of the many, many years of mm -hmm. uh, development, geothermal development without any, any earthquake mm -hmm. and how few events there has been in so many years of development uh, in some places in certain condition. So this must be clarified. Right. Uh, there is an, another question from Enzo Aconcha. Um, how, uh, sorry, how do you balance the value drivers between climate change risks, so net zero goals, welfare, economy, and social aspects, as you will uh, describe here? Is it good to push for a project with a climate change point of view without addressing the other ones properly? How do you think this is a, a key challenge? This is a keen challenge. I, I agree with you. Um, I, I think that we didn't provide enough information about uh, uh, climate change effects. For example, the resilience of geothermal development with respect to the climate change has not been clarified enough. Uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, uh, places in the United States where they were completely without energy for a while because all the energy was provided by windmills that were uh, uh, unoperable due to the, to the uh, very cold weather. So they were frozen and stuck and people remained without energy for a long while. Uh, this is a risk, for example, that uh, uh, geothermal do not, uh, do not face. And, uh, and we have a base load production. So there are many things uh, that uh, contribute uh, to, the, to the climate change uh, uh, issues that probably we need to clarify more to the, to the society together with uh, economic. Uh, if we want to do a complete planning, we have to compare the different options, the different pro and cons for the different places. And uh, this is something that uh, we, we have to face, uh, we are facing now, but probably uh, we have to deepen more in the geothermal sector, I think. Right. Um, is there a question from, from the, the participants? Don't be shy. <laughs> well, I think it's time to give uh, <laughs> The, yeah, it's, 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 time it's also the, the time to, to give the floor uh, <laughs> to the next uh, speaker. Thank you very much, Adele, for... Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Great, uh, your great talk. It was very interesting to have this uh, in mind. Mm -hmm. While we are a lot of uh, geologists and so on, but we should keep in mind that uh, the, the end of the... I mean, the, the project life is uh, with... Uh, to provide energy to people and, and they, they need to be involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will learn all together. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye.